Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Welcome to the Grow Tent, everybody. You have found the best growing channel on YouTube, man. The place where we simplify the approach for you so everyone can learn how to grow. We make it so simple, even I can understand. So I'm going to listen and learn right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Growth Tent. We got a fantastic episode for you today. Today's episode is all about CO2, so you make sure you stick around. All right, so first things first, as always, guys, remember to join the Patreon. We got one of the best Patreons there is when it comes to this subject. You can see full link to grow videos, you get a direct link to me, you get access to probably the best Discord on the planet as far as this stuff is concerned, with some of the best uh, people there are. Uh, also, guys, if you would like, uh, you can still see my plants for free because you don't get to see them a ton on this channel anymore because YouTube hits me with a, a little shadow ban hammer every time I do. So you can still see my plants for absolutely free at my Instagram, it's, which is, I think, right above my head somewhere at this point in time. Guys, remember to like, comment, and subscribe on the video. Helps out the video a ton. Uh, what else we got? Uh, the, the channel is sponsored by, I don't know, Mars Hydro, one of these two sides. Mars Hydro, it's a new camera angle that we're playing around with, so I'm not sure which side I'm going to pop that up on. Uh, remember to watch the full videos. That also helps out the channel a ton. If you want to ever see me mess with pythons and tarantulas, you can find it on my uh, channel called uh, Spartan Pythons. You can find the link to that in the video description, that, that, the video description below. All right, so let's get today's episode started. Let's go. All right, guys, welcome back. We got a great episode. Again with the clapping, always with the clapping GT. Knock it off. I gotta work on that. We got a great episode for you today. Today we're gonna be talking about CO2 and should you be using your money on it? Should you not be using your money on it? In what situations should we add it? Uh, so that's what we're gonna be talking about today because I get a lot of questions every single week on this subject. And we're not talking about CO2 with the big mother bottles and the expensive rags and controllers and stuff like this. We're gonna talk about the kind of stuff that beginners would use because that's where we focus this channel. So we're gonna be talking about those kind of things. And when we're talking about those kind of things, we're talking about like, guys, what we have here is we have two main brands or styles that we're gonna talk about. The first is like an exhale, which is like a big bag. And then the other is the uh, TNB, which looks like kind of like a two liter bottle of soda. So those are your two main styles that we're gonna be talking about for beginners. They also have the pad style. And uh, so those are your two mains. The cost on them is I think the TNBs, the last time I looked at them for the main bottle, not a refill, was anywhere from like 25 to 35 bucks. And the bag was like 50 but the bag is supposed to last longer. But I'm telling you right now that uh, the TNB bottle will put out way higher numbers. All right, so why would we go about adding CO2? Well, CO2 is the one of the main parts of photosynthesis. So theoretically, if the more CO2 you have, which is what the plants take in, you know, plants take in CO2 and they, through the process of photosynthesis, they take that carbon off of there and they release just the O2, which is the oxygen which we all breathe. So theoretically, if you add more CO2, then the plant is able to consume more of it and, you know, get bigger, faster, bigger buds, bigger everything. In theory, which, I mean, the theory is proven, but whenever we're talking about it for beginners, it's whether you need it or not. Um, so, but conversely, when you add more CO2, so you've given it more fuel, you have to add more light. So if you're adding more light, which, you know, these are all dangerous things for beginners, but we're going to talk about how to safely do this and when you are reach the point where you should be doing it. Um, when do we do it? So I know a lot of people are like, well, when do I add the CO2? And the answer to that is I add mine usually right at the end of veg and then let it carry through flower and, uh, if I'm going to add it at all. And you don't can you run it in the earlier parts of veg? Well, of course. Uh, do you have to? No. No, you don't have to, but you can. It, it has proven somewhat beneficial to run it. The plants will get slightly bigger, slightly faster. If you were, uh, you know, growing a bunch or something like that, I could see it, but you gotta remember these are all costs and it's a cost that you don't have to take on. So that's kind of like how I'm framing this is, 
This is not an expense of something that you have to do, okay? Uh, where? Does it matter if we put the bottle or the bag at the top, or does it matter if we put it at the bottom? And I've done it both ways. I've not noticed a difference whether it was at the bottom or at the top on my meter that checks the uh, parts per million of CO2 in the air. It, there was a zero difference whether I had the bottle at the bottom or the bottle at the top. Well, you got to remember this is, you know, a lot of people think you have to get these bags and bottles and then you hang them up above it and it falls down onto the plant. What you got to remember is in this environment where we have wind and air and you're adding CO2 into it, the entire environment, the, the molecules will spread out evenly throughout their entire environment that they are in. That's just the way, the natural order of it. It's not going to just sit all on the floor. It will just, it'll be completely over. So if I put my bottle at the bottom of the tent, even with a completely full canopy, and I have my reader at the top, my reader readings are just as high, whether they're at the top or in the middle, right where the plants are. It didn't matter. The, plant, the, the parts per million of the CO2 was identical. And there's a reason it was identical is because whenever you're using CO2, you have to be in a sealed garden. Um, the, whenever you're growing with CO2, if you have your vents open, you're exhausting your, your air outside of your tent, you're wasting your money. It'd be like if you were in your car and you had all the windows down and the air conditioner on and it's 100 degrees outside all, or at your house, whichever, car, house, whatever, you're not going to run your air conditioner with all your windows open. It's a waste because all the cold air goes right out. Well, the same thing's happening whenever you're running CO2, whether you're using the bottle, the bag, heck, even if you were using a regulated system with a mother bottle, a mother bottle, a mother bottle. Even if you were doing that, you, you grow, whenever you're growing with CO2, you're growing in a sealed space, so you're not losing the amount of CO2 that you're pumping in there because if you pump it in your exhaust fan is running outside of your tent it's not going to do anything besides put your co2 in here and then just exhaust it right outside the area that you want it so anytime i am going to add co2 i actually disconnect my hose from the from my exhaust fan and then i seal up all those entrances tightly and i i will usually pull them their drawstrings tight push them in and then I'll take and I'll put some like t-shirts or whatever into the top. I'll seal the bottoms all up. This is if you're going to be running CO2 because we don't want that escaping. Uh, like my natural CO2 levels around here are around 700 ppm, 750. If I want them, the, the levels I'm really going for are above 1,000, 1,500, anywhere in that area and you're fine. What you'll notice is if you actually have one of these meters and you go into your tent and you're in there, like if I'm in there and I'm like on a phone call or anything, the readings will go from 700 to 1300 just with me talking. <laughs> and, but they don't last very long because it's not a constant source. Once I stop talking, the, the, the readings will start to fall. But with these bottles or these bags, they actually do, if you're in a sealed environment, that is a huge caveat because if you're not, they are completely, you, are, you might as well just grab it and throw it right in the trash can or even just save your trip and just set your money in the trash can before you even left because you're not doing anything if it's not in a sealed environment. It's basically worthless. But if it is sealed, uh, like this TNB bottle, they're usually good for around two to two and a half weeks is before they really start falling off and you need to put a refill on there. So the initial investment of the TNB bottle is a little bit cheaper than the exhale bags, but uh, the exhale bags, they last longer than the TMB bottles. So whenever you're with the TMB bottles, about two to two and a half weeks. And if you're going to put them in towards, you know, I usually, if I'm going to put mine in, I, I usually put it in around three, week three of flower. Uh, but I don't usually do it because I don't like growing up and I don't need any extra because I already got too much extra if there's a such thing. But I'm running out of places to put it. First world problems, I know, I know, you don't want to hear about it. So with the TMB bottles, they're made actually to flower like a 12 foot by 12 foot area. I didn't think they would work very well in a room that big. So whenever I originally took it, I put mine in a two by four the first time because they're extremely easy to seal because it's such a small area. It's an extremely easy area to seal up. I just unplugged, you know, 
my uh, and I just let my uh, my exhaust fan just run inside the room. So it was still cleaning the smell, but it wasn't exhausting it outside the tent. So a TMB bottle in a two by four will bring your uh, PPM levels throughout the day to around 23, 2400 PPM, which is quite excessive. So, but that was a whole bottle in a small area. Now, whenever I did the same thing and I took that TMB bottle and I put it into my 555, what I found is it kept the levels right around 15 to 1600. But you got to remember, you got to go in there and shake that thing every single day because if you don't shake it, it'll start trailing off pretty fast. So you go in there, you shake it one time with your finger covering the top because if you don't, it's going to like you ever see like people when they shake up champagne bottles. So it's going to do that exact same thing in your face. Ask me how I know. Go on, ask me. Because it happened to me. That's right. I was like, just, just you know, tired one morning before I went to work, went down there to shake it. <laughs> Everywhere. It was a good time. I smelled fantastic because I didn't have time to change before I went to work. <laughs> All right. All right. So we talked about whether we put it on the top or bottom. You talk, We know that we now we need to keep it in a sealed environment. And we know that they're good for about two weeks on the TMB bottle. After that, the refills, I think, are like 12 to 15 bucks. And you literally can just... Pour the old stuff out, pour the new stuff in, add your water, shake it up, and go. Um, now, the, the, the real question is, should you use it? And I'm going to tell you for 90% of the people that send me questions and emails, they're just not there yet. I tell people that they don't need to add their CO2 until they're really filling out a canopy. Because... Once again, we're talking about waste of money. Whenever, like, if you have a you know big expensive light and you're only covering, you know, you only got, you know, ten percent of your floor covered with one plant, and you've got your light turned up and turned up, when you could probably finish your whole row on twenty five percent because you're just you're using, you're not using your you know your stuff efficiently. And once you get to the point where you can get you can decently repeatedly fill out a canopy on a tent so your plant training and everything is all on point this is something you will add towards the end of you becoming a really good gardener and by the time that you're ready for it that is when it's a, it's a good wise decision to spend your money on co2 because it can make a difference and i'm talking it can make a substantial difference on your end yield. But if you're not filling out your canopy, which is where you should be concentrating on first, it is a complete waste of money because it's going to flower out that tent, whether you got one plant in there or you had the whole thing filled up. Well, sometimes you fill up the whole thing with one plant, which you've been on my Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but unless you're filling up those things, I wouldn't even suggest using it until you get to the point where you're consistently have good looking plants you don't need to add this step but once you're ready it does make a difference so uh, I'm not a big fan of the exhale bags I just don't like them uh, whenever we used the exhale bag even in the 2x4 the highest it got up was I think 1100 and that was in a 2x4 and I know they're supposed to last six months but I'm just not a big fan of those exhale bags. But if you want to use them, I guess you can. But once again, we don't need to use them until we have got our gardens and our plants under control. And once we do that, then it's a very good thing to add in. And uh, you're not wasting your money on it unless you're not doing it in the sealed. But the real way to do this would be with a mother bottle, uh, doing a CO2 burner, which I do not recommend for new people or getting one of those nice fancy controllers to constantly keep your PPMs at the exact, usually people set them between, you know, right around 12 or 1300 PPM, but you're not there yet. And if you're, once you're growing some of these tent sizes you guys get, you're never going to need it anyway, unless you're trying to go into business. <laughs> All right. So myth not busted. Myth is, uh, proven when it comes to CO2, it 100% works and it can be a huge waste of money if you're doing it wrong, just like everything else. So thank you for hanging out with me today, guys. I'll see you next time. Ooh, a little, little slight. Woo! All right, there we go.